Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and I wanted to go over something that I think some people misunderstand when we talk about this having to do with XRP. We talk about uh, the idea of XRP being a world reserve currency, and I want to make sure people understand, first of all, that didn't come, that, that idea did not come from me or from someone in the XRP community. That idea came directly from Ripple. And so the first point I want to make is that the the old whole concept of this and the whole concept of something as bold as that came from Ripple. Um, I've had a lot of people ask me. There's a little there's a little screenshot that goes around that says this, and I wanted to actually show you the page that says it. Okay, this is from February 28, 2017. Ripple consensus ledger can sustain a thousand transactions per second. Now this comes from this is written by Miguel Valles on this date. Okay, this is from Ripple.com, Ripple Insights, which is their newsletter they put out. And he did say it. He says it right here at the very end. He says, most importantly, we, we remain more committed than ever to the simple goal of making XRP the world's reserve digital currency. Now, it's important that you understand, and I'm going to show you this. Um, reserve currency does not mean that that does not mean that XRP is going to be this one currency and the whole world is going to look at XRP as the world reserve currency and nothing else. That does not what you know the same way that the US dollar is now. That does not that is not what that means. That's not what what I'm saying. I don't know what other about what other people are saying, but that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is XRP is a, is a reserve currency there's several there's going to be several reserve currencies several digital reserve currencies but i believe xrp will be one of the core um digital current world reserve digital currencies but i just want to show you here a reserve currency or an anchor currency is a foreign currency that is held in significant quantities but think pre-allocation theory we talk about how uh, i've talked about this brad combs theory but we talk about how um, we believe that that central banks, banks around the world will hold XRP in reserves, okay? Reserve currency. And XRP will be that, the kind of like the oil to, to um, grease the wheels of finance around the world. Um, it's held in significant quantities by central banks and other monetary authorities as a part of their foreign exchange reserves. The reserve currency can be used in international transactions, international investments. In all aspects of global economy, it is often considered a hard currency or a safe haven currency. Um, but anyway, this gives you the history of that. But I wanted to show you global reserve, global currency reserves. See, it's not any one, but the, what's important is that XRP would be one of them. And in order to be one of them, you've got, like Miguel Valles said, and I'll show you in a second, you've got to have the liquidity of the others in other words you've got to have what billions of dollars in flowing through or you got to have countries holding billions of dollars in reserves around the world right okay um so but i wanted to take you down to this part down here um right here calls for an alternative reserve currency a report released by the united nations a conference on trade and development in 2010 called for abandoning the U.S. dollar as the single major reserve currency. The report states that the new, res new reserve system should not be based on a single currency or even multiple national currencies, but instead permit the emission of international liquidity to create a more stable global financial system. Countries such as Russia and People's Republic of China, central banks and economic Analysts and groups such as the Gulf Cooperation Council have expressed a desire to see an independent new currency replace the dollar as the reserve currency. On the 10th of July 2009, President, uh, Russian President Med Medved uh, proposed a new world currency at the G8 meeting in London as an alternative reserve currency to replace the dollar. At the beginning of the 21st century, gold and crude oil were still priced in dollars, which helps 
export inflation has and has brought complaints about OPEC's policies of managing oil quotas to maintain dollar price stability. Some have proposed the use of the IMF special drawing rights as a reserve. China has proposed US uh, using SDRs calculated daily from a basket of US dollar, Euro, Japanese yen, British pounds for international payments. On the 3rd of September 2009, the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development issued a report calling for a new, new reserve currency based on the SDR managed by New Global Reserve Bank. The IMF released a report on February two, in February 2011 stating that using SDRs could help stabilize the global financial system. So all of this is happening, I see the date of 2010, um, 2011. So Bitcoin's created somewhere in 2008. Ripple starts and, and XRP is created somewhere in 2011, 2012, right? Do you think all of that's a coincidence? Not me, not after what I've seen for the last two years in this space. No way, no how. This is all, this, there, this was all a plan, folks, and I'm gonna show, you, show it to you. It's not just me talking, but first I wanna show you this. Remember Miguel Valles, I've shown you this before. He tweeted this back in 2018. When XRP is more liquid than a G10 currency, I'll buy myself a chocolate chip and get back to work. One thing I did not show you when I showed you this before is that Rob Lee, who's, who I, you don't see much of now, but this guy was a pretty big, uh, he was everywhere back in about 2018. Well, he replies and it said, and he tweets this, thank you for your purchase. He apparently sent cookies to Miguel Baez. And then they've got a picture down here where Miguel Baez says, Robert, can't thank you enough for the cookies. I wasn't in San, in San Francisco this week, but you'll be happy to know the team loved them. And um, so these, th that's Ripple headquarters with all the cookies. And then he also, Rob Lee also replied and said this, no, thank you. Thank you. You deserve much more than 50 pounds of cookies. I'm so excited and happy with you. Less than one year, you got me since this. And he, and he put this clip of Miguel Valles on here. That hopefully we'll all look back someday and be like, wow, I can't believe I was a part of that. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm obviously pretty stoked. Like, how do you intend to distribute the rest of the XRP then? Yeah, no, that's, that's a good question, Mahir. And I, I don't necessarily know that we'll ever distribute all of it. In my mind's eye, there's a possibility where, you know, we end up more of a lending kind of, uh, you know, more of a lending lender of last resort capacity, maybe. Uh, I think that would be a little strange for a software company and maybe some things would have to, to change structurally. Maybe we have to have a different organization or something. Who knows, right? Um, but as these capital markets develop, as liquidity develops, there are going to be folks who, you know, if they want to provide liquidity in the asset, don't want to necessarily own the asset because that puts them in harm's way for uh, price movements. So if you can. So lending to the world, XRP, I like that. All right, let me get rid of this. And then there was this, this was from Chris Larson. Now, if you wanted to be a world reserve digital currency, if you wanted to be one of the currencies in the mix, you might be something like this. Right, things like XRP and Bitcoin and Ethereum, they're kind of in that mid range. They become, I think, like the Singapore dollar or the Swiss, Swiss franc, and they become useful in you know kind of lubricating the, the the world to make it easier for those big four to get in the hands of people all around the world uh, uh, so that's useful and then it might also be things like applications and all right so there's that clip and then um galgatron hit the nail on the head right here he says ripple's quote goal of making xrp the world's reserve digital currency is talking about XRP as the reserve currency used to bridge value for, for cross-border payments, not talking about a country's reserve currency, which is absurd. Ripple's only focus is cross-border payments. The term reserve currency applies to the scenario where XRP is the world's first choice for liquidity to make cross-border payments. And in fact, at Swell, Brad Combs asked the former um, federal uh, governor of the federal, the, the um, Indian uh, sent India's central bank, Raghuram Roshan, I think that was his name. Anyway, he asked that guy a question. I think that guy misunderstood Brad's question. I think Brad was asking exactly what Galgatron's saying here. As, as a world reserve, one of the world reserve digital currencies, not 
like a global reserve currency for the world, this one thing. That's not what Brad was asking. Um, and I think the guy thought Brad was asking that when he was really asking about the bridge asset reserve currency. Um, and then there was this, and I should keep showing you this because Hodor said this, Ripple is quite cognizant of possible market capitalization numbers along with the public relation challenges that will go with it. Their plan is not to just sit on their XRP and watch as their valuation skyrockets past the valuation of the East India Company. The plan, in my opinion, was all along to have you in order to be a reserve currency, people have to have reserves of that currency around the world, all these countries and or banks, central banks. OK, now this is a great clip if you want to really get a, get your mind around this from a worldview point of view. Listen to about three minutes of this. Uh, this the global dollar standard could have lasted like another 20 or 30 years. But our politicians take it as, as our birthright, that, they've, that we dominate the world monetary system and we can print our currency uh, unlimited. Uh, you know, the deficit spending exploded under, it was George Bush actually that, where it first started. Obama has uh, done what George Bush did uh, times, uh, many, many times. Uh, and uh, we just keep on doing more and more uh, reckless deficit spending and print the currency to cover it, basically. Um, uh, the debt and the currency creation uh, spells out the end for this current world monetary system. And history will repeat. And there will be, you know, um, the classical gold standard fell apart during World War I. And in 1922, there was an emergency meeting in Genoa, Switzerland, uh, of, of a bunch of finance ministers and economists to try and come up with a new world monetary system. They came up with the interwar gold exchange standard. Uh, then that started to fall apart during the Great Depression and uh, in 1944 there was an emergency meeting at Bretton Woods, New Hampshire and a bunch of economists and, and uh, finance ministers came up with the Bretton Woods system. In 1971 uh, there was the Smithsonian Agreement which wasn't even necessary because the Bretton Woods system flooded the entire world with U.S. dollars and, and by default the dollar just became a world reserve currency. And, uh, uh, but it is the poorest, poor, most poorly designed of all the systems. Um, it didn't have any stress cracks until Saddam Hussein tried, to, tried selling gold for oil. Uh, and then there was one more nail, in, golden nail in the dollar's coffin uh, that happens and now they're happening every week. Uh, a couple of months ago Russia opened a trading exchange for yuan. So now they can buy yuan futures so a Russian can create an order uh, that's de denominated in, in, in yuan and hedge it and know that when he pays for that order that it's going to cost him exactly what uh, whenever he locked in that futures contract. So they can now do trade uh, directly and skip converting to U.S. dollars, which is what they would have done before. Uh, every country on the planet, when they wanted to transfer currency from one country to another, they would convert to U.S. dollars, transfer that, then convert that into the local currency. China has uh, been uh, opening, they've been getting their currency on exchanges all over the world, making it a very easy currency to do direct settlement in. Uh, and I mean, every single week, there's a new nail in this coffin. People don't realize how fast this is falling apart. And I've China, said that before the end of this decade, the world will have a new monetary system. If you couple that chaos of switching. Before the end of this decade, there will be a new monetary system. Um, and we are in 2020. He did that in 2015. And he and we he he just uh, he said in this decade in 2020 just happens to be the year of the digital asset according to Ripple, all right. So um, but it's not it's not anyone. And by the way, that was Mike uh, Maloney from Gold Silver. Uh, uh, he's a gold guy. Um, but and then you also but it's not any one person. This everybody knows it, and that's why it's important to show you these videos here. This is, um, let me see, I don't it doesn't even say who this guy is, but he's somebody. Greatest um, demonstration of soft power is the fact that the U.S. has the reserve currency of the world. 
And that's not going away overnight. But to the extent that we have a unilateral foreign policy and a unilateral trade policy, we're sort of tempting the world to find an alternative to kind of clear and use something other than the U.S. dollar. That's not practical today. There's, it's not going to happen in all likelihood with euros. It's not quite yet. The Chinese currency is not quite ready for that yet. But there's enough technology out in the world today with cryptocurrency and uh, changes going on that you can imagine uh, if you let yourself mi your mind wander a little bit, that something becomes an alternative in the future. And we shouldn't be tempting fate like that because it's such an important contributor to U.S. success. The so when I see things like that, and the question you should be asking yourself is, do you, th do you think for a moment, for a second, that the United States did not know that this was all coming? Of course they did. So the question is, what did the United States do about it, and when did they do it? When did they start planning this? Well, according to the Federal Reserve Chairman of the United States, they've been working on this for two decades. And I've, told, I've shown you the video clip where he said it. Okay, I'll, thanks to XRP Joker there. Um, and then Jeff Hardy sent this. Listen to this one. This is a guy in Congress. Uh, Mr. Foster, he and I have uh, had a lot of conversations about digital currencies. Uh, Jay Powell just answered our letter on the idea of a digital token. And I think the uh, concept's a, a little misunderstood. If we want a digital future in finance and we want to protect the preeminence of the American dollar as a reserve currency, this idea of a digital token is an important concept. And it's not uh, anything except allowing our government to facilitate a blockchain transaction process legally in the future. We have Visa Debit, we have MasterCard, we have SWIFT, Fedwire, the ACH system, all true, all have private sector participation in them and government participation. But this idea that there's a new rail created that's a blockchain rail that both bank and non-banks can participate in to settle transactions through a token, it's coming our way faster than we like perhaps faster than the five-year time frame you outlined. So I do think it's an important issue for the FSOC to continue to consider and also to have Treasury's view on independent of what uh, your agent over at the Federal Reserve uh, thinks as you implement Article One's power on uh, currency. So they're talking about it in Congress. Um, and this is from Cryptopolis. Um, how about this? Is this the beginning of the popping of the, the bond bubble, both sovereign and corporate? Well, I think it absolutely is. It, it absolutely is, in my view. And, and I think it's the beginning of the end of the dollar's reserve status is structured. How can you hold dollars as a reserve asset when the Fed is printing $125 billion a day of them out of thin air at the drop of a hat? It's not a reserve asset. It's not. And so, you know, that's ultimately be really good for the U.S. on the other side of this. You know, the Chinese have been using the structure of the post-71 dollar system against us for the past 20 years. And, you know, it's been getting Washington rich. It's been getting the Chinese rich. It's been getting Wall Street rich. It's not been getting America rich. It's not been getting flyover country rich. And so, you know, this is a change that has needed to happen. And it was moving slowly, but to us, very perceptibly accelerating in that direction. And it's, and it's brought it all forward. And so I think once you sort of cross the Rubicon, and I think ultimately that's what the Fed really did I thought they were there last fall, but now I think that I think everybody's starting to think that, right? Of or a lot more people certainly. There was a great chart somebody put in front of me over the weekend. It showed in the worst of the '08 crisis, the Fed was buying I think 2.5 billion or three three billion dollars a day in bonds. They're buying 125 billion a month, and it's not enough. It's not enough. And so, to me, I, I think it's also helping set a narrative, right? If 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 I wanted to set a narrative to significantly devalue the dollar and all fiat currencies against gold to basically reset the system, I would fire the big gun. I'd say, I'm gonna buy it all and then let markets keep falling. And you know, I'm not saying there's some big hand running the whole thing, but I'm just saying what, what the markets are telling you is it's not enough. The dollar's gotta go way, way lower. The Fed's gotta buy more. And, and look, if the Fed's already gonna buy it all, they can buy equities, but there's one thing left for them to bid for to convince people that the, that the, that the dollar's going down. And they, they are reticent to even say the word, but Look, if you keep having markets go down, even though they're buying all the bonds, they might have to end up bidding for gold. Is this? Okay, I thought that was a great clip. And then there's this. This is Ray Dalio from Bridgewater. And I believe Bridgewater is a name you might not want to forget. 
uh, as far as the short-term debt cycle or the business cycle, we're 10 years into this expansion, and uh, many of those um, stimulants that happen will be dissipating. We won't have more interest rate cuts, better material. You won't have more tax cuts and so on. And this is true around the world as we have our obligations. So we're coming into this period that is sort of a big sack, not a debt crisis in that way, but a lot of obligations that are coming at us, particularly in the mature reserve currency countries. Um, and they include pension obligations, health care obligations, and the like, large deficits, which will have to be monetized. They'll print money to deal with that. There's a rec reserve currency issue. And then, of course, we have the external conflict or the issues of the rising um, of a great power in the form of China rising and the United States um, having its, um, its uh, let's say, relative decline. So we're at a point, um, I think, that is very similar to 1944. Uh, at, there's a war, at a war, after a period of war, there is a period which there's a peace because nobody wants to fight the country that has um, in the, it, and won the war, and there's a new world order. And there was a new monetary system, 1944. We established the dollar, reserve currency based monetary system, and the like. And I think that all of that, all of those, it, it is going to really change the world order in dramatic ways in the next 10 years. Okay, so that's from Ray Dalio. Um, and then this is from uh, David Schwartz back, uh, uh, by the way, I forgot, uh, that's from Gold Telegraph. And then uh, this is from Cryptomaniac. He is the reserve currency of the world right now against what a lot of people would like to see. Is it possible that the USD could eventually be the reserve currency of the Ripple Protocol, Ripple Network? It's certainly possible. You could also see another government, any country could do this, introducing, let's say, gold, 100% reserve backed gold on the Ripple Network. And people might decide, ooh, that's what I want to use as my reserve currency because I, you know, maybe the government of China, let's say, does that and people trust them. There's certainly any number of ways this could play out. To some extent, Ripple Labs has bet on XRP. Ripple Labs holds an enormous number of XRP and our primary business model is that they'll appreciate in the future. But of course, there's no guarantee. I see. So now that concept that the US dollar could be the reserve currency of Ripple, of course, you know that people hearing this show and hearing that, if they've not heard that before, talk about Ripples, right? Talk about Ripples going out. That's going to cause a lot of people to be afraid and to think, wow, we don't want Ripple because the US government, I'm sure now, since they heard this episode of Bitcoins and Gravy, they're on to it for the first time. You know, they're slow, they're sleeping usually. Now they're going to work as hard as they can to get the US dollar to be the reserve currency of Ripple. And we're back to the same place we were before Ripple and Bitcoin and all of this. What do you say to someone like that? Well, they have to compete in a fair playing field, in a fair playing field. So the intermediary currency could be the US dollar and you can still hold whatever currency you want. You right. can hold Bitcoin, you can hold Ripples, and that would just be where the liquidity is. And they would have to compete on a completely fair playing field because people don't choose intermediary currencies. They just make payments with the cheapest path they can find. Wow. So it's going to be competitive just like like it is um, outside the Ripple network, except people will be able to move more easily between currencies. So if one currency has a small advantage that only affects a narrow group of people, they can still hold that currency without having the large cost that they would normally have to bear from making a different choice. I see. So it, it does enable more freedom of choice with currency. And in that kind of market, it remains to be seen what will be the preferred currency. It could be Bitcoins. Yeah, yeah. This is exciting stuff. I mean, it sounds kind of like you're hinting at sort of a free market. It is. It's a very free market. It's essentially a perfectly free market and a perfectly fair market. You don't even know the identity of the market maker or the currencies that you're using. All you're looking for is the cheapest path. Is it possible? Cheapest path <laughs> is XRP. Um, and then uh, Mark Phillips, you know, had done this. I've shown you this article before, but I wanted to highlight one quote in here. XRP will be the world reserve currency. I believe that Ripple designed it this way from the very beginning. This is a quote from one of the founders of XRP, Arthur Brito, who we never have seen, who wrote, XRP must be scalable to accommodate 7.5 billion. This means that it was designed to be used by every human on the planet and to serve as a world reserve currency. Yes and yes. And you'll see the population of the world is 7.594 billion. Um, so from the very beginning, they designed this to be used by the world. <clears throat> now, then this is from Mickey B. Fresh, 
Um, we can't ever forget this little video clip. Because they saw it as a, you know, rather than having a smaller number with a very high price, they saw it as something they wanted to be a, a effectively a global reserve currency. I think the opportunity. All right, and then there was this. This is some um, from uh, this was from Stewart XRP, um, and I'll just. What do you have platforms, here. full service suite offerings around digital assets? Um, in addition, I think you know we might see central banks with greater adoption rates around the concept of using digital assets as reserve currencies, and then I think we will see derivative. That is all I wanted to show you there. And then finally, I wanted to draw everybody who, who is hearing my voice who has never seen it. I would call this video right here from Love for Crypto the preeminent video around this topic. This guy um, did a phenomenal amount of research on this video. He's got over 250,000 views. If you are listening to my voice and you have never seen this video, it's called Ripple XRP, the master plan, get ready for a new one world currency. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and he is love for crypto. Give him a subscribe on YouTube. And also you can follow him on Twitter at love for crypto 17. But I wanted to draw your attention that this is um, at the 216.39 mark in his video. This is a tweet he did a long time ago. And you, you may not be able to read that, but I, I'm going to read it to you. One, XRP becomes the global reserve currency, removing the U.S. petrodollar status. Two, Ripple's 55 billion XRP escrow more large percentage is signed over to the IMF World Bank. Three, XRP becomes the global standard for the exchange of value uh, via the Interchange Value Web. Um, three, 3.0, and then that's W3C in parentheses. Um, so, but if you've never watched any videos on YouTube besides the one you're listening to right now, go watch this video. It's long, but look, you're in quarantine out there. If you take two, I, I guess, let me see how long it is. Take, uh, let's see, it's around almost three hours. Take three hours out of your life and watch something that could change your life. And go follow love for crypto. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button. And tell your friends and family that love for crypto's Ripple XRP, the master plan, is probably the preeminent video when it comes comes to talking about G the the big big picture of XRP being a res world reserve digital currency. This guy called it before anyone. Thank you for listening.